And I remember going to see a French fi uh, banker saying to me, oh, you're talking about like if some industrial wants to, to have fun and find like, that that's love money. Because I was a woman, he said to me, oh, that's love money. As no equity today is a very, it's a good question and, and we should uh, really mm -hmm. maybe uh, think of it. I started as an actress, so it's probably different because I even less feel legitimate because I didn't do a school as a producer. I was an actress and I started uh, very young when I was 20 years old with Agnes Varda, who was my one of the first directors I worked with. And she was very um, sensible to that subject. But as she said, like um, very recently because I became a co-producer on Faces Places. So um, nearly 30 years after uh, we worked together that she uh, effectivement, uh, the, the money is le nerf de la guerre is, is, is the thing because she was saying everyone are giving me honors, awards. I don't want awards, I want money. <laughs> That is the thing. Give me money. Stop saying. And how uh, it is? Uh, it is the, the 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 question. And it's uh, in the entrepreneuriat, which even you said that you were talking about the digital. But for a new startup, it's the same. There is a group of women in France that are working, which I really like. Um, they say that uh, um, we need to count women for, they, for them to count, that it's really important to know that only 2% of money are going on investment on, on, on companies. So, so I really was uh, very happy when 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, the collective 50-50 uh, uh, arrived in France. So we have numbers to understand because I felt that it's our own bones as well, the fact that we really uh, stop ourselves, uh, that is a big subject with women. Uh, it took me 10 years to say, okay, I'm going to be a producer, okay, because maybe probably I was an actress and there were very little actresses, no actresses producing films that she wasn't playing as a producer, becoming a producer. So I. It, it took me times to do that. And I had role models as Agnès Varda. So I really wanted to understand why it took me so much time to, to, to do that first step. And when I see the, 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 the numbers, I am very surprised that when you have, uh, for the script women, 96% uh, of the script women, they paid a little bit more than men, 9%, which is very rare. There are maybe two, uh, only two, two types of women on a, on a set that are actually paid more than men. But the makeup and hair, they're 90% of our women makeup and hair and they're paid 15% less than men. Why? And so I, as a producer said, we need to, uh, to make statistics to try to um, get conscious of why uh, we have that chance. So I ask all the director of production I'm working with on my films to speak to them. Just I wanted to understand, and then I realized that they never, they they never ask for uh, more money. They never even um, arg arg argument. So I was very surprised of that. So I think it, uh, we women are have a problem with actually. Um, uh, sorry, I, I, it's more uh, um, um, going for it, I would say. It's funny because I uh, really realized when there was in 2007 the, in the, the financial crisis that in America that they were doing 600 and more films that they did half of those films. And in France, we nearly didn't change the numbers of film, we still produced 260 films. So it and it nearly didn't change. So the crisis didn't impact the French finances. 
So I realized that all the uh, smaller budget, the uh, independent film in America were, were financed by H funds, by alternative finances. And then I realized that in France, we do not use this type of different way of looking for uh, equity, which I could say. Or, and I remember going to see a French fi uh, banker saying to me, oh, you're talking about like if some industrial wants to have fun and find like that that's love money because i was a woman he said to me oh that's love money as no equity today is a very it's a good question and, and we should uh, really maybe uh, think of it so i was very surprised then how because i wanted to look somewhere else maybe uh, in private equity Mm -hmm. uh, the banker didn't took me seriously then and then we finally made for example if i still speak about Agnes Varda last film we did found money that was equity that was not love money that was serious and the people get their money back and it was really with um like any finances any um sofica any mm -hmm. other way of financing and so um Again, it's um, a way of being uh, um, uh, sure of yourself or confident, let's say, self-confident and, and inventing or trying something new. But um, I would say more that uh, with this age fund, I realized as well that uh, for women, there is something about uh, a level of uh, uh, money you're asking so in documentaries it's okay first film and then when you get to big budget that is the big question and mm -hmm. I realized that as a producer so here in France the, the there was a big scandal because the biggest budget last year was Roman Polanski film and why after Me Too why after all this happened some producer decided to put 22 million on a, a Roman Polanski film, while on the other side, women have very much difficulties to get bigger budget. We just are always stuck on something that is difficult to, to go. Maybe start with the banks um, and, and try to, to quickly uh, share um, with you what we learned in the process of, of dealing with banks and also in, in the run up to building uh, the cultural and creative sector guarantee facility. So what we um, have been hearing um, and seeing a lot is that um, after, during and after the crisis, the financial crisis, banks closed their department, their media and entertainment departments. So banks are now left with staff uh, which does not understand uh, the value uh, creation and to the exploitation uh, processes in, in the film and audiovisual slash entertainment um, industry. So because they don't understand it, they uh, must regard it as high risk. And uh, if they are not um, uh, blessed with a background in structured finance and do not have, let's say, industry connections that can highlight and explain what is what and how you can lend against contracts and all these kind of cash flowing products and so on, you are really uh, advised to keep your fingers off. So this is what they do. They don't understand it. They don't get it involved. Those who have an understanding, and you could uh, call them expert lenders in Europe, and it's just a handful left, um, they often look at um, the, the administrative costs uh, in, in um, uh, you know, providing loans. And uh, these costs are high and often too high given the needed funds. So then again, it's not an attractive business for banks and they rather not offer the loans. So um, in that sense, uh, it was very advisable when in uh, 2016, um, the, um, the uh, sector guarantee facility was uh, put into place. It's run by the European Investment Fund on uh, behalf of the European Commission. And it tries basically to help house banks of a film producer, for example, or other cultural and creative actors to um, extend loans and to uh, cover a significant part of the, the risk. Mm -hmm. But it's not 100% of the risk they are covering. And so again, many banks say, well, you know, that bit of remaining risk 
is not for us uh, to handle that we cannot uh, uh, cover. So these are some aspects that we have been uh, observing a lot. So of course, this puts more pressure on finding alternative financing sources and as rightfully say, <laughs> keep pushing and pulling uh, and try to, to bring, um, you know, participants of training pro uh, programs to this notion that there are other um, ways of financing. And in order to do that, I think it's important to understand um, uh, one important thing. Um, first of all, film is a value proposition. And right there, many people go like, pardon, you know, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know, if you look at a film as a value pro uh, uh, proposition, um, you turn either to your uh, public funds and piece together 15 different uh, territories in your financing mix and, and try to make your funding body happy and hope for an audience to see your film. But if you go for the alternative uh, model, um, uh, and that brings the other aspect of value, value as in convictions and beliefs. In that sense, a value proposition offers you completely different roots and, and different space. And this space, um, uh, you would enter first by asking, why do I do this film? You know, what does it stand for? How do I add value to my audience? And uh, why would my audience care for my film and not go to see a blockbuster? So you begin to think much more market oriented and audience oriented. And with that in place, you also build relationships much earlier. You begin to describe your project in a different way. And you are able to bring partners on board who would otherwise not even notice you. And I think this is, you know, on a very high level uh, without going into uh, much detail, the, the, the difference in mindset. And um, in that sense, you would then be able to talk to high net worth individuals, to brands, you would be able to uh, access equity. Uh, that is not love uh, money, but why not also love money? <laughs> it's never bad. But this kind of different perspective, I think, is um, important to be able to access alternative finance.